everybody. It's Jessica Stone at Stansbury Research, and I'm joined by Amanda Kowochi of the Health and Wealth Bulletin. And we're taking a look today at the relationship between genes and COVID-19. What have we learned about whether or not genes can determine, Amanda, someone's response to COVID-19? A lot of people are still trying to figure out how our genes are reacting to the virus and if there's anything we can tell about why some people are getting more sick than others. I can tell you that back when the SARS outbreak happened, they actually found that some people had different responses based on something called a toll-like receptor, a TLR. And what I found really interesting is that there's a TLR7 that's actually linked to the X chromosome. So that means women have two copies of it and men don't. And that's one of the reasons they think that this is hitting men much harder is because that TLR7 that they're finding uh, really detects the viral presence and kind of boosts up your immune response. So if you have more of that, you're better able to fight, especially in that first wave, the innate immune system. Men don't have that, so they do have a little bit, you know, they're at a bit of a disadvantage in that case. There are a couple other genes being tested. Uh, they're finding there might be something to do with blood types. I'm not going to get into the whole thing, but basically different types of blood, you carry different antibodies, basically so your blood doesn't fight itself. And that's why transfusions are really tough because you can only match with you know, certain right. blood types depending on what you have. And they're finding that the, these specific antibodies might play a role in how our body deals with the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the one that causes COVID. Um, so there's really a lot of great research out there. Um, there's also some I saw with the HLA genes, which really, uh, there's a study being done about how they, some people have mutations in those genes, which help them clear viruses like hep C, um, which is almost unheard of. So it's really cool because we're seeing what turns on and turns off the immune system. And we can also use that to figure out what the virus is really targeting. So I guess I'm wondering, with all that we are learning about genes and COVID-19, is that going to help us treat people better? If it's on someone's file, we know that they have a certain predisposition. That could help us take steps to further you know, prevent them from getting worse. I know that there are some cases where people have certain mutations that prevent them from producing enough interferons. That's a protein in the immune system. Um, so we can use interferon therapy to help them boost their immune system. Now, I don't know if we're at a point yet where we can start using that for COVID or not. I imagine we're probably still a ways away. Um, what we do know, and I mentioned this with you know, it hitting men worse than women, uh, is that we also see that there are certain risk factors aside from our genes that we can start taking measures for. So we know that people with things like heart disease and COPD, diabetes, they're having more trouble and they're actually at the higher rate of mortality. So I was reading too about some of the research and you've mentioned quite a few of these proteins and the research around them, but there's also this protein known as ACE2, which can be actually hijacked by the virus to sort of get into somebody's body, into somebody's cells. What are we learning about that and how it plays a role in spreading COVID? How maybe it could play a role in curing COVID? Right. Uh, so again, this is something that the research is still coming out on. Um, but what we do know is that the ACE2 receptor is where the virus is actually attaching. That's how it's getting into our cells because it really needs a way in. Um, and that receptor is what it's binding to and making its way into our cells. Now, one of the scary things about this is that ACE2 receptors are really prevalent in our lungs and in our heart. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why we're starting to see a lot of people, not just with lung problems, but also with heart problems and lasting heart problems even after they've recovered. You know, we're talking about genes in the people that get the disease, but there's also genes in the virus itself. Is that a way to help track the spread at a minimum? Absolutely. And there are a lot of researchers already, you know, scrambling to try to sequence all the genomes of the virus that are out there. You know, the more samples they get, the more complete the picture. Uh, they're already seeing that it's starting to mutate and cause new strains. They haven't seen that any are more particularly deadly than others, but we can definitely track where it's spreading from country to country. This is one of the concerns we have is that this is an RNA virus, not a DNA virus. And an RNA virus has a tendency to mutate more quickly. Influenza is another RNA virus. That's why we have to get a new flu vaccine every year because it mm. keeps mutating. So there is some concern, especially with a COVID vaccine that may or may not be coming out soon. You know, how long is that going to be good for? How long until the virus mutates and we're going to need a new one every year? Um, so these are all questions we're still asking. All right. Well, thank you for asking them with us and trying to fill out in our picture of how genes relate to COVID-19. I imagine that if we did this interview 
in another few weeks, there'd be even more uh, information and, and certainly more questions, that's for sure. And if you'd like to see much more content just like this, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for watching. That's all for now.